Hey, we're all ordinary, but we can do extraordinary things. And if you question whether you're ordinary or not, I have two simple questions for you. If you can answer yes to either, you're very ordinary. Did you come into this world as a baby? Are you going to go out in a casket? You're ordinary. I'm ordinary. But we can do extraordinary things. We're ordinary, but we are full of untapped potential. No matter how much you've achieved to date, you are still laden down with incredible potential. And there are extraordinary things that you can do. Tonight, I want to tell you three principles that will enable you to do extraordinary things. The first is believe it's possible. We live in a cerebral mindset society culture where everything is in the head. We're not a very hard culture. We're not, I'm not being religious, but we're not a particularly faith-believing culture. And there's so much that we can do if we believe. We can actually make things that are not as if they are, if we simply believe they are. The first step of believing is to dare to dream. Some people talk about daydreamers as if it's a negative thing. But do you know, dreamers change the world. In fact, dreamers are the only people that change the world. Every new invention, every new creation started off as a thought in a mind that allowed that thought to become a dream, to become a passion, to become a purpose. And dreaming is the first step in releasing our creativity. We're all incredibly creative beings. We've got so much ability to create, whether we think we have or not. It is sitting right inside you. Free yourself for, from self-imposed limits. There are so many limits we have in life that are actually imposed by ourselves. We say it's not imposed by ourselves. We say it's we shouldn't, we couldn't, we mustn't because of something external. But imagine if you could change your shouldn't to maybe, your couldn't to possibly, and everything else to I will. Free yourself from these horrible self-imposed limits. And as you want to believe it's possible, surround yourself with people who see your potential. A mirror can tell you who you are today, but it takes someone with a bit of vision, a bit of insight, who can actually look into you and see the gold, can see the potential, and can help you move from where you are today to the place where you want to be. So first, believe it's possible. Second, prepare yourself. And the preparation might not be what you expect. Every experience in life can be useful. The good ones, well, maybe the good ones can be useful. I think we learn a little. They confirm what we already believe. But the bad and the painful ones teach us so much. I had a horrible experience as a teenager. I lost a sister to suicide. <coughs> One of the most painful things a teenage boy could experience. Yet, in hindsight, it changed my world. At the time, in the most painful way. And as I tried to deal with the pain, I dealt with it the wrong way. I transmitted my pain. I lashed out in anger with my pain because I didn't know what to do with that pain. It was too much for a little boy to cope with. Yet a time came in my life when I became able, understood that I didn't have to live in pain, that I could actually have my pain transformed. And whatever language you want to use, whether you want to call it transformation, being able to let go, being able to forgive, being able to move on, something happened that made me a very, very, very different person. And I would encourage each of you, pain will happen, that's not the encouragement, but learn 
how to cope with pain if you want to prepare yourself to do something <coughs> extraordinary. Other thing in preparing yourself, look to help others. Develop a life that's about giving. Develop a life that isn't egocentric. It's not about me. It's about giving. It's about serving. It's about putting something back into this beautiful world that we live in. Because as we give, there is some law that means we keep getting a whole lot more than we can give. Other thing of preparing yourself is be grateful. Be able to see the good in the things around you. Be able to, to just be thankful for the beautiful things, the wonderful things, so that our eyes don't drop and look constantly at the negative things. A friend used to say, develop an attitude of gratitude. And it's a wonderful, a bit cheesy, but it's a wonderful preparation if you want to do extraordinary things. Another beautiful thing to do if you want to do something extraordinary is to develop an abundance mindset. And by that I mean, actually believe there's enough to go around. Do you know there's enough food for everyone in the world? There's enough money to provide shelter? There's enough opportunities for all of us? You know, we all can be an amazing success and it doesn't mean if I'm a success that you have to be a failure. Or that if you're going to be a success, that I need to be a failure. We can have win-wins in every interaction. But to have win-wins, I think we need to believe there's actually enough for all of us. And there is. And the last thing in preparing yourself, be faithful in the small stuff. Often we want to do something extraordinary and we think, we need to do something really big to do something extraordinary. But the extraordinary starts in the little things. In simply being faithful with whatever has been trusted into your care and doing the best job you humanly can. Being faithful in the small things. Now this is a whistle stop in being ordinary and doing extraordinary. My third and last point is turn thoughts and dreams into plans and actions. You could probably tell by what I've said already, I believe in dreams. I believe in thoughts. My head is full of them. In fact, I have so many thoughts and dreams. My little head, sometimes some people think it's a big head, but it almost feels like it can't contain them. But you need to turn these thoughts and dreams into plans and actions if you're actually going to do something. To do that, first of all, you need to see your opportunities, and then you need to grasp them. Opportunity will not land in your lap. You need to see it. You need to take it. You need to make it your own. Then you need to listen to the right voices. I'm a bit embarrassed when I listen to the introduction and the things that I've done because I'm Highlander and we're self-effacing and, you know, we're all Jock Thompson's bairns and we, we all just get on. But... If I hadn't great voices around me, people I love, people I respect, people I trust, who speak positively into me, every good thing I've achieved, there's been 10 voices saying, James, you can't do that. That's not possible. No one's done that before. But the voices I've listened to are the ones that said, you can. That's possible. And, and I've been supportive, positive voices. Listen to them. They're not just always saying nice, cuddly things. They also say some challenging things. And that's great too. We also, if we want to do anything incredible, we need to take some measured risk. Now, I had an experience where I took a bit of risk. And I did a parachute jump for charity, which seemed, well, I signed up like a really, really, really clever idea. And I took off in Perthshire in this plane that was a really nice plane and a very good plane. And we circled and got higher and higher until we were thousands of feet above the beautiful Perthshire countryside. That plane seemed really good. 
I was struggling to see any logical reason to launch myself out the door. And then I thought of the reassuring words of my instructor. Your parachute, James, has a 99.3% chance of successfully deploying. Have you any idea how big 0.7% can become? It was immense in my little head. And then he helpfully said, and if it doesn't work, you have an emergency shoot. I think that was meant to bring comfort. It just made the 0.7% a whole lot bigger. So as I sat with one batok, batok, for anyone who doesn't understand healing, in the plane, my fingertips touching the plane, everything in my body screamed, fall back into the plane, it's a better idea. But when the instructor said go, I threw myself and had one of the most exhilarating rides down through the sky, my parachute opened, I landed safely, I am here today. But if we don't take measured risks, we won't achieve anything in life. We'll just stay at home and do, do nothing. Take measured risks. And find fellow travellers, this path of doing things that are slightly different, slightly edgy, will get criticism. It might get lonely. It might... If you don't have people around you that are supportive, encouraging, challenging, not just saying have people that just say, well done, keep doing it. People will challenge and, and be constructive. Have them around you, because that is one of the great things that stops us from giving up. And lastly, in turning your thoughts and dreams into plans and action, be determined. If you lack anything in skill, in gift, in talent, being downright determined can make up for it. Just that determination that says, you know, I'm going to see this through. I will make this happen. No matter what gets in my way, I believe in what I'm doing. And I will see it through. Determination wins people gold medals in the Olympics. Determination is more powerful than we often give it credit for it. Be determined. We've established we're all ordinary. All of us. Very ordinary. What extraordinary thing are you going to do in your ordinary life? Or put it a different way. What do you want your legacy to be? Reflect, ponder, and once you answer that question, just do it. Thank you.